Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study a new category of the technique, the pathological products. Pathological products, this, this category is actually, these pathogens actually the, the results of the other pathogens. So the pathogens we mentioned from the six exogenous pathogens, the endogenous pathogens, and then our human body are affected by those pathogens, and then as a result, there are some products at the end, which can be phlegm or fated blood or stones or others. But these products, these these results can be the pathogens affect other and cause other problems as well. So in this category, we're going to discuss what are the characteristics of these pathological products because these products have very typical symptoms or characteristics. That's why we're going to put them aside and we're going to speak them specifically. The pathological products mainly refer to the phlegm, and stated blood, and also the stones. So we're going to introduce one by one. The first one is phlegm. Phlegm and fluids actually, we, these two are quite similar. Let's see from the definition first, phlegm refers to the pathological products of impaired water metabolism. So as you can see from the definition, the, the phlegm is a kind of body fluid in the body, but this body fluid is result from the impaired water metabolism. In other words, which means that if the water, the water metabolism is normal, then is the uh, body fluid or blood in the body that we need. It's the liquid form, it's something we need. But this this water met metabolism is impaired or abnormal. So we will cause Problems and this product, we this abnormal water in the body, we call them phlegm or fluids. The phlegm or fluids, the difference between these two is only the thickness. Phlegm is thick, and fluids is clear and dilute, so it's more clear. So we in in Mandarin, we, we actually have four different words to describe the thickness of phlegm from very thick to clear. There are four categories, four, thick, four levels. And here we introduce two, phlegm and fluid. The reason is, be, is because that's, no matter how many levels we going to describe this phlegm, the characteristics or the causes of the phlegm are similar. So it, the phlegm refers to, to the, the impaired water metabolism. It can result in physical phlegm, which we can see as such as the phlegm or sputum from the lung or inflammation on the skin, the pus. So that kind of phlegm, that's something you cough out, that physical phlegm is considered as phlegm. And the other phlegm is something we, can, we cannot see. 
but something we cannot see how can we say that's the lamb that's from the symptoms of the patient this is for the the flame we cannot see it's very similar to the thick exogenous pathogens the wind the coldness the fire those stuff in the body we cannot see but how do we know those are the exogenous pathogens affect the body that's from the symptoms of those pathogens same as here for the invisible flame it's from the symptoms and this is actually quite tricky because the phlegm the symptoms of, of phlegm when we discuss the characteristics of the phlegm you will see that the symptoms of phlegm actually there are many different types of symptoms can be caused by the phlegm and it depends on where it was affected it can be dizziness it can be madness it can be insomnia it also can be vomiting or diarrhea it can be any kind any kinds of symptoms and any part of the body so that's also why in that there's this a saying that for them is also the the, the leading cause of Lamb is the leading cause of this of all different diseases, especially for difficult diseases or the strange diseases, such as the such as the COVID nineteen is we are experiencing now, and then for the, the severe condition. We in the formula you can as you can see from the formula we don't, we, we were u, using to treat the COVID nineteen. There were most of the time that we have herbal medicine, some herbs to clear the phlegm. That's because for these severe condition, we always think that the cause of the severe condition might be phlegm and others so the phlegm might be included that's why we use the curves to clear the phlegm phlegm can cause many different symptoms the next question we're going to talk about is the formation of phlegm and fluid where does the phlegm come from the phlegm can be the result of the six exogenous pathogens, can be the result of the emotion disorder, also can be the result of improper diet. So as we said in the previous video, especially the one before this, when we discussed the improper diet, either excess overeat or hunger, and these will cause the spleen deficiency or spleen digestive system digestive function disorder and then this will result in the poor digestive function and then this poor digestive function in the in the body cause all those symptoms such as distending fluid at some ache or fatigue and this is actually the result of a phlegm there's something in between the poor digestive system and the symptoms in between the poor digestive function will cause phlegm and then the phlegm cause all those symptoms and the phlegm because of phlegm is the, in, the result of the impaired water metabolism so you need to go back to the Zhang Fu theories. Which organs are related or are closely related to the water metabolism, which are the lung, the spleen, the kidney, the liver, also san jiao. So then you will see that's how the phlegm. Any 
pathogens that can affect these organs and result in phlegm, such as if someone the dampness, damp, someone uh, is attacked by the dampness, and the dampness can affect the spleen because the spleen prefer dryness, and so the dampness will affect the spleen and cause poor digestive function, and then this will result in phlegm. Because the, the spleen could not digest food, and then the food we eat in become the pathogen. They stay there without di being digested, and then it will cause fermented to become the become the phlegm there. And also the phlegm because it is a liquid form, so you can move here and there. In the under the assistance of the qi because the qi can move here and there that's why it can move to the head and then um, this refers to the invisible flame it can move to the head it can cause headache dizziness it can live in the intestine cause inflammation of intestines or you can it can live stay in the chest or even skin so the phlegm can go to all over the body. Also, the phlegm due to the six exogenous pathogens, it also depends on which pathogens or what kinds of categories in terms of yin and yang, such as cold due to the cold pathogens, the coldness. And then this kind of phlegm will be clear or white, or the color will be white. If the phlegm is due to fire, it will be thicker, the phlegm, and the patient may feel a bit difficult to cough out. And also, the color may be yellow. So these are due to different pathogens especially for the cold and dampness from the exogenous pathogens. These are in fluids, these are in pathogens, and the in pathogens we, uh, we attack, consume the yang qi, which you can cause yang qi deficiency in the body, specifically spleen yang deficiency, which will result in the impaired water metabolism. So this description, if you not understand well, you need to go back to your Tangfu theories. You can revise from the videos when we discuss Tangfu, what's the relationship, what's the function of different organs. The improper diet. We have mentioned this for the overeating, or someone that eats, they or they drink a lot of alcohol, a lot of wine. Wine is damp heat. The, the property of wine is damp heat. So if someone they drink, they drink a lot, it also will affect these, it will result in phlegm. And when I said drink a lot, you see here, we also consider as the improper diet. So you see some of the pathogens is actually the combination of different categories. And also the improper diet will result in the phlegm and the phlegm as a as a pathogens. Also the imbalance of the internal organs. In Chinese medicine theories, the spleen we, we think that where the, the phlegm comes from is mostly from the spleen. That's because the spleen is in charge of the transportation of food and water, which is the essential, which is essential, which is essential for the water metabolism. So we think that the phlegm is from the spleen. 
and the lung, but when you says when you can see that the flame, most of the flame is coming from the lung. So the lung, we think that the, the lung is only the container of the flame. That's why during our during our treatments, the the treatment for the flame to clear the flame is not from the lung. We will focus on the spleen to recover the transportation and transformation function of the spleen. Then can recover the water metabolism and reduce the flame. That's also why you can see in either in acupuncture or herbal medicine. Specifically, when we talk about acupuncture, there's a one point, acupuncture points on your legs. Feng Long, if I'm not wrong, it's the stomach 38. That's the one of the most important points to clear the flame. But as you can see, this point is on, on stomach meridian. The reason why, that's because stomach and spleen is the source. Of a flame, where the flame comes from, not from the lung, it's from the stomach. And the kidney is considered as the root of the the flame. That's because the kidney is the water organs, and the kidney is in charge of a bo of body fluid. So these are different rela relationship. Of flame and organs. Actually, the the disorder and the formation of flame are re actually related to all five organs. The heart, the liver. We mentioned the lung, the spleen, the kidney. We also related to the liver and the heart. For the heart, that's because the heart is in charge of the blood, and the blood and the body fluids as the body are sharing the same source. So the, which means the blood also the the heart also can help the water metabolism. If the Heart yang qi or the chest yang qi is not enough, it will cause the accumulation of dampness in the chest, which results in phlegm as well. Also, for the static blood, when we discuss in, in a while, also we will. The static blood after a long time also can result in the flame. For the liver, it is more related to the qi, the flow of qi. When qi stops, the water, the body fluid is stopped. Once they stop, Cause the impaired water metabolism as well, so that's the 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 source, the relationship of different organs and the flame. Then the next is the characteristic of, of flame. The first characteristic of flame is obstruction of qi and blood flow. The flame we obstruct the qi and blood flow. That's because the flame is a physical object. Once it, it stays in the pathway of qi and blood, either in, either in the meridian or sanjiao, it can cause the flow of qi and blood. And then when you have this kind of symptoms of the, this kind of causes, what's the symptoms of these, it depends on where they adjust the flow of qi and blood. If they adjust, adjust the, the flow, 
in the meridians, it can cause the numbness in the extremities or it can affect the flexibility of the extremities, also paralyzed, such as after stroke. Patients could not move one side of the body. And then in this condition, we, might, we think that it might from the phlegm, it might from the blockage of the phlegm in meridians. Also, when the phlegm obstructs the qi and blood flow in the, on the skin, it can cause skin disorder. When the phlegm stays in the organs, it will cause different symptoms which relate to the organs, such as the lung. If the phlegm stays in the lung, patient will have coughing or difficulty breathing or coughing blood, uh, coughing phlegm directly. If phlegm stays in the heart, the patient may feel chest pain or oppressed chest. If phlegm stays in the stomach, the patient may have nausea or vomiting. These are because of the phlegm of just the qi and blood flow in these organs. The phlegm also will affect the fluid metabolism, or actually you can use the water metabolism directly. The water, the phlegm is the result of the water metabolism. But the phlegm, again, it can affect the water metabolism, which means it's like a visual circle. The impaired water metabolism will result in the phlegm, and then in the phlegm, you will make the water metabolism worse. That's because the phlegm, once there's, there's phlegm in the body, you're going to, it's going to affect the, the functions of different organs, and the impairments of organs will result in phlegm again. So it's the visual is the visual circle of the phlegm and water metabolism. Phlegm also easy very easy to adjust the mind or the heart. This refers to the the heart or the heart mind. For this, the symptoms of this is unconsciousness. If patient feel headache or fatigue or even worse unconsciousness or madness or mental disorder, then we in Chinese medicine and acupuncture theories we think that the reason of this kind of symptoms is due to the obstruction of the phlegm in the heart. It's because of the heart is the house of the mind, so anything related to mental problem is from the heart and uh, the obstruction from the phlegm. Causing a variety of diseases, that's, is that, that's just to say that the phlegm can cause different symptoms. It depends on which organs, same as the examples we have mentioned previously, there are many symptoms. It can be from the all over the body. It just depends on where the phlegm is. And also the the phlegm is kind of dampness and which means the the cause of diseases also will be longer than other pathogens. Then it's one of the most complicated pathogens in our theories and also in clinical practice. Also one of the most difficult pathogens to, to 
to heal. In patients with phlegm, it can be many different symptoms, and the most common symptoms we can see is this headache, dizziness, or heavy feeling of the body. Or sometimes the patient can feel it, the phlegm of just the qi flow in the throat. The patient may feel the something in the throat. It's very hard to swallow, swallow but also very hard to spit out. If in the chest, can have chest pain, or if in the abdomen, in the spleen and stomach, can have, can have poor appetite. So that's just some of the symptoms. They can have more. But from the physical body, we can see for the this kind of body type or body constitution. Patient may overweight, fatigue, or from the tongue, the tongue may be like chapped or teeth mark, or even coating, greasy coating or slippery coating. The pulse also can be slippery. And then the phlegm also can divide it into different different types of phlegm. And then these different types we're going to discuss in detail in our diagnosis, diagnosis, which is the wind phlegm or phlegm with coldness, phlegm with fire, phlegm with dryness, phlegm with dampness. This combination of different pathogens will result in different symptoms. That's how we diagnose from the symptoms and then we trace back to the cause, such as dryness, the dry phlegm or phlegm with dryness. What kind of symptoms there? Because of dryness will consume the, the water or the body fluids. So this kind of phlegm, the, the first, the volume, it, it won't be a lot of volume. So it shouldn't be large volume of phlegm. This phlegm is dry and less volume. So the patient will tell you that they didn't cough a lot of phlegm. And the phlegm is very hard to cough out because the dryness consumes the water and also sticky. So you can go back to the six exogenous pathogens. You see the characteristics of dryness. And also dryness is more likely to attack the lung. That's why the dry phlegm always happens in the lung. Cause the dry cough, less phlegm, a sticky phlegm, also dry nose, dry throat, red tongue, and also less saliva. So these are the symptoms from the patient and then from these symptoms, why the phlegm is less and difficult to cough out? Then you use, you gather these signs and symptoms, and then you conclude, you trace back to the cause. That's the dryness, the combination of dryness and phlegm. So that's how we diagnose in acupuncture and in Chinese medicine. So that's phlegm, and then. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about the static blood. Thank you guys.